one of the uh, great innovations that we've had in construction in the last few years has been a product that I really, really enjoyed uh, learning about. And I sort of started talking to my friend Duffy Frazier about this about two, three years ago when it was still in the beta phase. And they were testing houses to sort of get their, their system working. The system is called Aero Barrier. An aero barrier is a sort of a, uh, a liquid that they actually introduce into the air of a primarily new homes, and then they pressurize it and it fills all the little holes on the outside of the house, of, on the exterior walls, and allows the house to become super, super efficient from the standpoint of air infiltration. So I asked Duffy and Matt Merkel and Justin to come on today and let's talk about Aero Barrier now, now that they've got some uh, practical experience with it and they know how it's going to work and, and they can kind of give us some more details on it. And then we're going to talk a little bit about if there's any application for it for remodeling. So welcome to the show, guys. Uh, do we have sound with everybody? Um. Can you hear me? This is Duffy calling in remote from my cell phone. I hear you, Duffy, and, and you on the screen, you're just a phone. And that's really how, you know, that's a very attractive picture of you. It looks very good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you thanks, so much. Thanks for, thanks for coming, Duffy. Hello, hello, Matt. How are you? Hi, good morning. I, I think we have, uh, I'm very well. I think we all just have a fear of talking over each other. So that's why you got a bunch <laughs> of hand waves. <laughs> and then Justin, uh, Justin is a aero barrier installer locally here in North Texas. And we thought we needed him because somebody has to know how to do it. <laughs> how you doing, Justin? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, <laughs> Matt, you're the national sales rep for Aero Seal and Aero Barrier, and uh, I'm curious, how is this product taken off nationally? How how is it? Uh, are your builders implementing it? That's a great question. So, Aero Barrier on a national level is something that's really kind of starting to make big waves in the industry. Um, we have up to this point, thousands and thousands of applications yearly um, on a national level and really just a, a very brief history of the company, just for context for yourself and your listeners. We kind of started the, the patent for this um, was in 2016 and it really kind of has that, um, that garage story, if you will, of uh, an idea that uh, a very brilliant person worked on, uh, Mark Madeira, uh, had an idea to essentially fix HVAC systems in real time uh, through the ductwork and make them more efficient. And as that, uh, as that became something that was an option um, for homeowners, we then expanded that idea to create Aero Barrier, uh, essentially a very similar application, but for the building envelope. And so this little kind of kernel of an idea has now exploded um, to include a Rolodex, such, uh, including obviously Justin as, as our installer in Dallas, and uh, the other, uh, everyone else that we have in the country. Mm -hmm. So it's really something that um, the, the wave is kind of washing over and is prevalent in all four corners of, of the United States. Is there a, uh, a niche market for I me? Mean, or it, does it matter what, what climate zone you're in, whether or not it makes more or less sense for you? Um, well, I would say in your climate zone, it, it certainly would. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it is always uh, seemingly very, very hot year round. And <laughs> so the idea is to, how do we keep that hot air out, uh, create that continuous air barrier throughout and allow the occupants to, to stay comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, really, I don't, I don't think it matters what part of the country you're in. Everyone wants an efficient home. In, well, in I mean, some parts of the might, country were oh, fighting – some, uh, some, pardon me for wa walking on you there. Uh, some parts of the country were fighting the cold more than the heat and just the opposite here. Um, and so I can imagine I – I can't see where there would not be a great place to, to use this product. Justin, it seems like to me as a, as a contractor and a builder, I've had a fear – 
at, from time to time of air leakage around foam uh, because we're using so much foam now that if we have moist air come in and, and particularly in any excessive amount or even of course water leakage that we can create a whole different uh, issue with not only air quality but mold and things like that have you uh, looked at this or had experience along those lines with the aero barrier and how it's kind of protecting that type of penetration from the exterior wall? Absolutely. So we do we do a lot of houses with foam, and you know they're they vary on where they start with you know two and a half air changes to up to seven air changes. We have started spraying aero barrier on a foam house. So, yes, I mean, this will definitely help with the moisture. It has no negative impact on moisture control. So, obviously, the less outside moisture air coming through the penetrations in the house, um, the better. Absolutely. So, Duffy, you're, you do foam. And <clears throat> I've, over the years, have run into uh, people that have done it incorrectly or they haven't thought it through or they didn't understand it when they introduced it into an existing structure and they they had problems with rotting roofs they have problems with you know all kinds of rot mold things like that because the foam will trap moisture if moisture gets in it do you, are you using this uh does this aero barrier is it helping your clients sort of guard against that well, anytime we can give more options, um, that makes us more viable as a contractor. Um, the open cell foam is not a rated vapor barrier. Um, I think where the most of the problems come from is the uh, mechanical contractor not introducing conditioned, uh, not introducing uh, fresh air mm -hmm. uh, because the house is too tight. Mm -hmm. And um, they're just not cycling it, and they're having a humidity problem. So, when, so, uh, so it's when not you necessarily use... the foam itself. Mm -hmm. So, Justin, when you use the aero barrier system, you're, you're basically taking total control of the interior envelope of the house. And you have you're absolute, to... You're absolutely correct there. Mm -hmm. And we're, when we seal the house very, very tight, now you can control how the air comes in. So you can pre-filter it with stuff like, with, you know, items like ERVs or mm -hmm. HRVs if you're up north, um, and control pre-filter that air before it comes into the house versus air just leaking through and bringing in pollen, dust, you know, heat, moisture. Does this, does this uh, require then that you pay a lot more attention to the mechanics, the filtration system? I mean, you're. I've always liked a little fresh air coming in, whether... <laughs> Whether it's coming in around the windows or through the windows, uh, I've always felt really secure with uh, that, that, like you say, that air exchange so that the air is be being cleaned out. But if you have a house that is just totally sealed like this, you really need to pay attention to how you're uh, filtering it and, you know, all the different options available to keep that air from just sort of pumping, you know, bio, bio bio whatever around that you don't want to be breathing right you're absolutely correct so when when we are in the sales funnel of selling aero barrier we want to know these things we want to know you know we want to get with the hvac contractor and make sure everything's being right sized because a lot of the software there's a default air change of seven air changes and we definitely want to make sure that's changed in their load calculation um so that if they need to bring in an ERV and we're taking the house, you know, down to passive numbers or lower, um, then they can make sure the indoor air quality of the house and everything is, is sized correctly. So Matt, not, not, not lower, not too high, but we want, we mm -hmm. always say sized correctly. <laughs> Matt, um, let's talk about, uh, your, your build your builders that are, are, are taking this, uh, product and using it. Are you getting any like production type builders? I, I'm sure they'd have to be high end production builders. The, I guess the, the key to it would be the cost factor. Is it a very expensive process to go in and do this on say a 2,500 square foot house? Yeah, so the, the price definitely varies. 
Um, there's a lot of variables, not to dance around the issue of cost, because that's that's obviously a concern for homeowners, for production builders and, and the like. Um, really kind of what we're gauging when we price things out are how tight is the building envelope to start, right? What are we getting ourselves into? How, how are we best servicing this client? Um, but then when you look into whatever the, you know, typically a price per square foot, um, and, and that's, that's done typically uh, contractor to contractor. We do see very um, similarities in the marketplace around that maybe dollar, dollar 50 a square foot, somewhere in that range, mm -hmm. depending on variables. Mm -hmm. um, but really kind of to finish up that, to kind of close the loop on it, once you right size your mechanical equipment, as Justin was saying, once you use insulation packages um, that give you deliver the same R value um, at less of a cost because you are sealing off the interior and creating that continuous air barrier. Um, and, and once you right size your mechanical equipment and your ductwork and your insulation packages, all these things, the, the overall impact on the build drops lower and lower and lower. So and, there's and a, really there's kind a of lockout. provides an efficiency okay. umbrella without the, the general overall cost going through the roof. So there's a, a cause and effect cost-wise. There, there's some trade-offs. Yes, sir. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and as we've become a lot more sophisticated with our um, inside environment of our homes and the air conditioning and mechanical and the energy efficiency, we've learned to sort of have to almost have a pick list of where we want to go with our dollars. Do we want more efficient windows, more efficient air conditioning? We have to, re most of us have to reach a minimum efficiency and not everybody can do everything. You know, you can't, you can't of course. get to a hundred percent. So uh, Justin, g give us sort of an idea of the, the process of if we're going to use arrow barrier from your perspective, let's say a builder calls you and says, okay, I want to use the system. Where do you start and what is that process to determine if it's right for him? Absolutely. Well, first I want to know, you know, what, what are they looking for? Are they looking for, you know, an efficient home? Are they looking for less dust? Do they have health conditions in the family? Because this this all takes place again with the indoor air quality. So that's that's one of the first things I want to ask and kind of read where they are with with the energy efficiency, where they are with the air ceiling, right? And then I kind of want to know I want to know more about how they're building. You know, are they doing advanced framing, two by six walls, two by four walls? Are they using spray foam, fiberglass, cellulose? So you're trying you're sort of determining the the overall attitude of the builder and the, towards the efficiency of the home. I'm sorry, say that again. You're trying to sort of assess the the builder's efficiency that he's building the home to begin with. In other words, well, here's a question: If I'm remodeling a house that's built in 1930 and I'm going to gut it, is that should I consider this type of product or is there just going to be too much air leakage for it to be valuable for me? No, absolutely. So when we, when we assess the house, um, I will walk the house and make sure if there are big holes, we can seal them before we do the air barrier process, right? So if there's shiplap and there's slats missing and bricks exposed and, and all that good stuff, we can, we can come in and pre-seal and get you to a good starting number where we can use the arrow barrier to find the little stuff that we cannot see. Okay, so one of the things that I neglected to tell our audience or have you tell our audience, what is arrow barrier? <laughs> so. arrow, arrow barrier is an air sealant where we pressurize the space. So we use a an actual blower door. We're seeing live results as we're sealing. So the blower door is pressurizing the space up to 100 pascals, and we're spraying an atomized acrylic-based um, sealant in the air. So it's it's like holding cans of spray paint in the air. So it's atomized. It's very small particles, and that sealant's not going to go anywhere until the blower door is pushing that air, pushing that sealant through the air to the holes on the exterior envelope of the house. It's like blowing up a balloon that's got little holes in it, but you're putting something in there that's going to fill the holes. Absolutely. It's, it's like fix a flat for the house. Fix, a flat, fix a flat for the house. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. That's perfect. 
And so the, 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 the point of the system is to block the holes from the inside of the house because, of course, if you, if you visualize this as the homeowner and, and you're not used to building houses, remember that if you have whatever you have on the outside of the house, brick, siding, whatever it is, it's covering up the wall. So you, from the outside, you can't see it. And so the arrow barrier system really addresses it from the inside. And that's what I think the beauty of the system is. So, um, you guys, I really appreciate it. It's, it, this has been a fascinating interview. Uh, I'm a big proponent of this whole process and your product. I appreciate you coming on with us this morning and, uh, telling our audience about your fantastic, fantastic product. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, yes. Thank you very much.